Um, my name is Allison, and I will be moderating this session today. Thank you so much for coming. And let me introduce the uh, uh, speaker today, uh, co-chair from Tenemel 4D Group, Marcelo Rove, and he will share the topic about unleashing the power of the new Shell ESB 32S3 Sense, tackling anomaly detection, image classification, and keyword spotting with Tenemel. And uh, before we start, I'd like to thank for 10ML strategic partners <coughs> for committing to take 10ML to the next level together. They are AIZ, Analog Devices, Arduino, ARM, Brain Chip, Edge Impulse, Green Waves, Groovy Inc., IBM, Image Mob, Affinian, Anatol. Anatra, Microsoft, Noda AI, NXP, Politan uh, Technology, Qu uh, Quinox, Qualcomm, Renaissance, Schneider, Sensei ML, Sony, Silicon Labs, ST Microelectronics, Syn Synaptics, um, Sentinent. Thank you so much. And uh, for the uh, for the audience who join us maybe the first time, welcome to join our growing 10 ml communities. Uh, we have 15,000 members in 48 groups in 40 countries, which in the meetup, and also we have 4,000 members. Uh, and 11.6 thousand followers in 10ML uh, LinkedIn community, feel free to uh, scan the QR code to join the 10ML communities with us. And also, we also have the uh, YouTube channel. There we have 9.6 thousand subscribers with more than 500 videos. Uh, if you got interested with previous talk, um, feel free to scan the QR code and subscribe to more 10 ml YouTube channel for updates and notifica notifications. Uh, there has also an upcoming event, 10 ml EMEA Innovation Forum will be organized in June 26 to 28 in Amsterdam. So if you got interested with this uh, event, feel free to go through this link to get more information and register. And let's welcome our speaker today, Mar Marcelo Rove. Marcelo Rove is born in Sao Paulo and held a master in data science from the uh, uh, UDD in Chile and an MBA from IBM EC in Brazil. He graduated in 1982 is an uh, engineer from Uni, UNIFI, Federal University in uh, Etajuban with a specialization from um, university, both institution local, uh, located in Brazil. And Rove has experience as a teacher, engineer, and executive in several technology companies. Um, and more recent, and uh, more recently at IGT as a VP and a senior advisor for Latin America. Marcelo Rove published articles about electronics on websites such as mgrobot.org, Hexter, and uh, Instructables, and uh, uh, Medium. Furthermore, he is a volunteer professor at the uh, Uni. Ife in uh, Brazil and a lecture at several congresses and universities on IoT and 10ML. He is in a very active member and co-chair of the 10ML 4D group, an initiative to bring 10ML education to developing uh, countries. Uh, let's welcome the Marcelo for today's uh, show. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Alison. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good night to everyone. 
Um, I would like to thank uh, City Studio and the Tsunamel Foundation, Foundation to this invitation, okay? As Alison comments, uh, I'm a professor at the UNIFE Brazil and also a co-chair of a TNML for the group. Talking about this group, it, we are a group of uh, professors and researchers uh, all over the world. This group was, was the, uh, I, the idea of this group was by Professor Vijay from Harvard and Professor Marcos Zanaro from ICTP. And we joined a lot of the people that uh, our, our main is to developing material and the classes and uh, gave all this uh, knowledge to developing countries in Latin America, Africa, and Asia. We have been done several events and uh, the next one will be very soon in a couple of weeks in Italy when we join to prepare what, what should be done with the TNML education uh, for the world. We'll have uh, some uh, news soon about that. Regarding our talk today, uh, the idea was to, to give you an overview about uh, how to use TNML with this new, fantastic, very, very small device. Okay, it's here in my hand. It is the, the Shao uh, ESP32 S3. Very small, very thin, but very powerful. So we, we will cover, try to cover very, very briefly how we can uh, see the train main areas then where you can see TNML today, okay? In, with motion, with vision and uh, with sound, okay? So before we start to this, let me only briefly take a couple, a couple of, uh, a, a couple, a couple of uh, ideas about what, what we, are, we are talking about. What's TNML? First of all, TNML, it's, uh, I also know the, 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 the technical name for TNML, it's uh, embedded machine learning. That's because it's a connection, it's a, it's a merge from embedded system and machine learning. For embedded system, exactly what we are talking about is such kind of uh, microprocessors that can run with a very low, very low power, okay? And uh, over those, those uh, devices, we can have uh, we can have a uh, uh, kind of software, for example, from frameworks like TensorFlow Lite, we call TensorFlow Lite, the micro that you can run inference in such kind of device. Okay, and that's uh, what you're talking about. Starting starting with hardware. Okay, our device only to have an idea how the the shell it's uh, let's say among the main the main found let's say. Uh, developing boards that you can find in the market today that you can use for TNML, like uh, the Raspberry Pico that was launched last year, uh, the, the Arduino Nano Sense that was very well used in, uh, in the, when we teach the machine learning and TNML, uh, the Expressif SES, ESP32, uh, and uh, to, the, to let's say to the most advanced area of TNML, we can have the Arduino Pro uh, line with the Portentas and the, and the Nicholas. The shell, it's uh, very close to the Portenta and uh, it's, a, it's a device with a lot of memory. Uh, we have, we, we can, because we can access the PS RAM, we have access to eight mega uh, bytes of RAM. And this is very important because RAM memory, it's a big restriction that you can find when you are talking about TNML, okay? Usually those kind of devices has around 240K, something like of uh, bytes of, uh, of memory. And that this, this memory, this RAM memory is will be responsible for do to run our model, okay? To do the inference, the, it will be in the, in the RAM. The great part of the, 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 the work will be done by the RAM. So this device, it's, uh, we, can, we have 80 megabytes of RAM, so this is very important. Also in terms of velocity, the speed, the clock speed, we are talking about 240 megahertz. So it's very higher, it's a very, very high, not that high as we can find, see in the, in the Portenta, but this is a pretty good velocity or speed uh, for TNML projects. Also this device or this developing board, you can find a low, low, low energy, Bluetooth, low energy, and Wi-Fi. That's very important when you, you collect data to prepare your, your, your training, okay? And two things important, it's uh, we can find the battery management in this kind of device that, that before is only 
all you could find this in some of our other shell family and to the to the to the up end of a TNML devices like the Arduino Pro. So it's very good because you can have it's very suitable for devices when you can uh, you can you can use for for TNML. Okay, perfect. This device you can see in fact is dividing two parts. You can have you can you can split in two here. Okay, you have the base is the shell itself when you can find uh, we, we can find the 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 micro the microprocessor all the the memory inside the ios the communication stuff all the the the, the let's say the the divide the the, the the pieces that will be the converting the five volts to 3.3 etc and you have this let's say a defensive functionality this is a kind of add-on that you can that you can add to this device that you can have a camera, a very powerful camera, uh, OV 2640. You can have a microphone. And also, it's very important, you can have a, a SD card heater. So you can have a card here that would be very useful to collect data, for example. Okay. So this is, so both together form what you call Xiao. Uh, the, the, the shell SP32 sense. Only the, the, the lower part is the, the shell ESP32 and S3. And here we have the sense part that is uh, attached to it. Okay, in terms of that was hardware. In terms of software, what we use in the developing that we do today will be the TensorFlow, the TensorFlow framework. All the project will be trained, usually is trained with TensorFlow, TensorFlow, TensorFlow. We, make conversion and all the optimization use the TensorFlow Lite. And the final model, once, once optimized it, you can deploy to the edge, okay? For example, you can use in, in smartphones, you can use in like, like in Raspberry Pi uh, or JSON Nanos, for example. Of, of course, those devices, we call them, when you do inference in those devices, we're talking about edge ML, not thin ML because we're, be, in spite of the fact that they are in the edge of our network and not connected, do the inference not connected with the cloud, the power needed to handle those kind of devices is much higher, different from such kind of device that you have only, only, only where you have only a small amount of the power available for, for, for running. And for that, we use TensorFlow Lite Micro that you'll be an interpreter, that you'll be inside the microcontroller Side the hand that will be responsible for the for the inference. Okay, perfect. So what do you do today? We we'll go, we we'll go from the data sets that you can you collect from several several sensors like a sound, vision, or sensors that you capture vision, sound, and motion. We we'll do uh, we we'll do all the training, optimizing the model. For example, using pruning and quantization that converting all the 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 wave. From, from a float to, to integer, for example, and to be applied to devices with very, very, a lot of our resource constraints, like uh, speed and, uh, and, uh, and memory, okay? Perfect. How we train those kind of devices? Those, those devices, uh, the, the, uh, when we train them, usually we use the TensorFlow, correct? In our case today, we use the Edge Impulse Studio that in fact has uh, has a TensorFlow under the hood, okay? But uh, when you look for the machine learning workflow, what do you do today is normally what we usually do with any machine learning project. We need to collect the data that you can collect the data using the device or you can take a, 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 a data set. Usually all, all the projects, you, you need to pre-process data, depend on the data that you have, you need to pre-process the data to be compatible for the model that will be used for training. And of course, you need to design the model or define what model you need to use. And you see a few types of uh, the models today. After that, we evaluate, we do the, the test. Once I'm okay with the model, we do the conversion and we deploy the model to the to the field doing the the inference that the inference is made in the device. So it's important only to remember for everyone when I'm talking about machine learning on that those tiny devices. What we are talking about in this case is doing the inference in the device. 
all the all the, the previous uh, steps from the pre-processing the data, designing the model, training the model, etc., is doing in the cloud. In our case, in the cloud of Edge Impulse that we will do today. Okay, perfect. When you use uh, TensorFlow or when you use uh, Edge Impulse, only we change a little bit the names, but it's, it's, it's the same thing. For example, in Edge Impulse, we have a part of the process that you do today. We call the impulse. But when you do the impulse, what you do is define what do you, how you take the data, how you do the pre-processing, and and uh, we design our our model and we train our model. So all those all those those steps are doing what we call impulse. After that, we do the test and we deploy. The the, the studio will help us to to take this. The, the model, the pre-processing, and the model that we did in the cloud, packaged together and uh, download as a library that can be used in the device. Okay, perfect. For you that doesn't know Edge Impulse, you can find here is edgeimpulse.com. It's very easy. You can open a, an account only with your your email, and you can use that. I invite you guys to enter in this in this code here in this barcode. You found you can find um, a very nice. 30 minutes presentation that uh, Sean Himmel from Edge Impulse gave in our last TNML for the uh, uh, TNML <clears throat> workshop that we did a couple of, a month, couple of months ago. So it's uh, you can have a very good idea about what we're talking about. Okay, so let's go to the, the applications. We have in fact a lot of uh, not a lot of time to talk, and I would like to to share the next 30 minutes or 40, 40 minutes comment with you the, about the applications. When you're talking about machine learning, all you guys that are used to, to know machine learning, you know that you can have three main different algorithms that you can use in, in, uh, with machine learning. You, you have supervised machine learning that can, use, can be used for regression, classification, object detection, for example, when you have the ground truth, you know the label of the data that you are using to, to, for training. So it's something a lot related to the task that you that you are done. When you don't, don't have the label, you, 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 you have unsupervised models like anonymous detection or, or K-means, that uh, is one of uh, algorithm that can be used for uh, anomaly detection, okay? Or reinforcement learning that, uh, that learn during the the process that is nowadays is we are using a lot for, for example, autonomous navigation in very small uh, drones, okay? Today, we will focus in two types of uh, algorithms. Algorithms that do classification, and you do this for the three different type of, uh, of the sensors, and also anomaly detection. So we focus in those two kinds of machine learning models, unsupervised and unsupervised, okay? Super. Talking about the talking about the sensor is another way to see what we do. For example, if you're talking about sound, okay, sound sound is a physical is a, is a physical concept, okay, that will be converted to audio using, for example, this kind of a sensor, a microphone. We also uh, uh, see today we're talking about vibration or motion that will be converted to electro signal using a accelerometer. That's part of a inertial model, IMO, okay? And vision that can be converted to a kind of a matrix using uh, this sensor that is a camera. So we'll do these three, uh, three types of projects using, uh, using our device in the TNML field. It's those three lines is very important, uh, guys, because sound, Sound and vision are very complex, very, very, very complex uh, type of data. And we, we learn how to convert those kind of data in a way that I can, I can analyze that more easily. The same with vibration, that's a kind of time series data that we have uh, tried to convert those, that, that time series that is moving during the time for a kind of tabular data to be easier to to do inference after, okay? Perfect. So let's start with vision. So I will follow more or less the same, the same, uh, let's say, sequence that uh, that I did with the with uh, with the, the tutorials. 
if you if you go to this barcode here, you can find you can you can find my tutorial. The tutorial is very very detailed. What I show you today in these three cases, in the main parts of that, how you how you should think or how you should behave to work with those guys. Okay, so start with the vision. Okay, uh, in this case, what I what what uh, I, I have done, it's to uh, create a classifier to classify, uh, for example, uh, 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 to differentiate banana from from apple from a potato. So I I, I decided to 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 find the three different uh, in, in, among vegetables and fruits and do this. You can do two things. The first thing that you that should do uh, here you can find my project if you want to follow after that. Okay, the Imagine Pools. When you do that, the first thing that you do is to capture data, okay? As, as we saw in the machine learning framework. You can do two things. You can capture data using the, the, your device, the camera of your device, it's okay. You can use even your cell phone, you can capture data from, from, from your cell phone, okay? And, or using, for example, a data set. In this case, for example, I start using a data set, a data set that you can find in Kaggle, a data set that have tons of uh, images of uh, several different types of uh, vegetables and, uh, and fruits. So from that, I select apple, uh, banana, and uh, the potato. It's important when I'm talking about TNML, uh, the number of uh, classes that you select, it's important. Usually you're talking about three, four classes. This is the way to do uh, teeny machine learning. You, you, you should uh, focus on a specific task to do. See if I'm a, I'm a person or not a person, I'm dog or cat, something like, okay? It's not something that you can sell, uh, differentiate among 1,000 different classes, for example, okay? This is very important. So do enter in edge inputs. You go. You, you can go there to the data to the to the to the data tab, and you can upload the data from your computer. So I started doing that. Okay. After that, what should be done, as I said before, is define what you want to do. So define your impulse. Defining impulses. Okay. The the as I said, I don't know. The data set can be image, different type of image can be. Uh, can it be uh, uh, RGB? Can it be uh, grayscale? Can it be small, small, small size, big size, etc. First thing you should do is to define the size. Let's let's define all image to the same size. This is very important. Those will be the data that will be enter in your in your in your, in, your, in your in your classifier. Okay. So you define in this case uh, we choose 96 by 96. Why 96 by 96? Because we will use after that in classifier a type of a neural network block that is uh, uh, transfer learning. If what means transfer learning, I you we will use um, um, a model that was pre pre trained. Okay, from Google pre trained this model. Uh, Mobilenet V2, that the guy that we use here, they they usually they they train you with 96 by 96 and 106 by 106. So we should use this the, pref the preference the same the, the same size that the the, the, the data the, the the size of the image that was used as a as a as a their data set when they train in that model. We we'll use that pre train it and train again only the the final part of that, only the classifier of that. So we take advantage all the, 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 the complexity of the model that was important to extract the characteristics, the characteristics of a lot of, a, a lot of a different classes. And after that, what you do is classify only the, the, the final part. So this is what you do. You, first, you define what, what should be done. Okay, define, I will do. That's the image. I use uh, RGB image, and after that, when I cut that, I, I send back. I send. Uh, uh, I send to as an input as the image we input on my classifier. Doing that, next ne next step. Here it's uh, the image part is very simple. It's only to to cut as I said, and we keep the RGB. And we're doing in fact we're doing nothing. Only only this uh, change of size. Okay. After that, we need to go. 
to the train. That's the important part here of this, this part of the project, okay? In spite of the fact that I can, uh, in spite of the fact that I have uh, a lot of images in this case because I download uh, a more, uh, the downloads, uh, I download a data set and also I, I take some photos here in my, in my house from some bananas and some apples, etc. One thing that they can do here is to do data augmentation. What means data augmentation? Okay, so this is, okay, when I say this is a pen, Okay, so I can take a photo of this pen, but this is also a pen, this is also a pen, okay? This is a pen, this is a pen. So what I can do is taking only one image of a pen, I can, for example, zoom uh, the, the, the image, you can cut the image or take part of the image. We can change, for example, the brightness of the, the image, for example. So here, the studio can do this, uh, automatically for us. So what I'm, what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm creating more data, I'm increasing the data set artificially, okay? Starting from, uh, from the guy, okay? Perfect. So what do you do? So it, I, we went there with the, this 27.648 features, it's, not, it's 96 by 96 by three, you can do the math, okay? Because it's 96 by 96, Okay, I have a one 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 of the channels because we are using a color 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 image. We have three channels R G B. So ninety six times ninety six times three. We have this this layer here. This will be the input. In fact, when we enter, we we'll change again uh, here, and we are using this case MobileNet V two. You can change another if you want. For example, we have a here. Uh, you can use MobileNet V1, for example. If you are, for example, if you do the same exercise here and try to run this, for example, in Arduino Nano, for example, the only way to do that, for example, you need to use a, a small model like a MobileNet V1, for example, because the problem is the, the, the amount of memory that will be used in your project. Remember, for example, Arduino Nano, we can have around 250 kilobytes of RAM. So it's impossible to use, to run this guy. When you run, you run your model in your, do the inference in your device, let's say half you can use for the model, more or less, the model should be less than or around 100 kilobytes for, for in terms of image, because you need to have another, you, you have some, 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 uh, Part for pre-processing, for post-processing, some some area to be used by the by by the the interpreter, the the TensorFlow like micro, etc. Okay, perfect. So here is the is the the pre-trained that you do. I define the number of epochs, correct? The 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 cycles that we use. We define the learning height. You can change this as much as you want. And if you want, you can go to these three points here and put your, if you change, you can change, you can type using TensorFlow uh, or Python, you can, you can change the, uh, the, the, uh, your code very, very, very easily here, okay? Also, it's, uh, it's important when we do, do machine learning projects, we split part of the data to be used in, in validation. When you have all the, the data set, usually you have a part of the data as a, you left for test to be used after you, you, you are okay with, uh, with the training. But also during the training, you take part of this data to do validation. So cycle by cycle, epoch by epoch, epoch by epoch, you can test and see if your model, how your model are going, okay? So it's a, it's a, it is good for prevent uh, overfitting here, okay? Super. So those are your hyperparameters that you define, the, you, you select your model, define your hyperparameters, and you do the training. When you do the training, you start the training in Edge Impulse, you have here the result, okay? The result you can select what the Edge Impulse does for, does for us, because Impulse, I, I ask here, they have, a training model with a floating point and a training model with quantized uh, model. Quantized because it changed all the, 
all the what we the result of our training that is floating point with four bytes I can reduce to one byte integer. Of course, there is a small trade in terms of accuracy, but you can have a, a smaller model. Always you, you you think you should think about about this trade. We're talking about a little bit less accuracy and and less uh, inference time and less memory. So it's a kind of a balancing that you should do here. When you use the when you use this this guy. It's important the the memory is the memory is depend of the size of your model how uh, size of your data etc. Uh, but the inference time depends exclusively will, will depend more uh, for your device. So usually you can come here and define only for a reference. This is a reference. So you define ah what's my target model in my case or in our case nowadays till now. This device is not officially supported by edge input, so it's not there. So you can select some device. So in this case, I select the Arduino Portenta, for example. Uh, is the is the processor that uses Portenta, and the Nikla is the 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 CPU is a ARM a Cortex M7. Okay, so it's uh, it's a little bit different. It's it's a little bit more powerful than our 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 own Extensa X7, and uh, remember the frequency of this guy is 480 megahertz. Our guy, our guy here, our guy runs runs with the, uh, 240. So we should expect, for example, this inference to be at least double and a little bit more because the uh, the different uh, type of uh, CPUs that you have here. Okay, great. When you do this. The next time you deploy this guy, okay, you, you go to the, the uh, I, I can deploy. And uh, when when you deploy this, this model, means that you do the inference. So the inference will be done in the device. And the device, what you do, you, the, the, the studio will give us a library, okay, Arduino type of library. In this case, you can have, you can select Arduino or is a C++, or depend of your device. In our case, you can define or C++ or Arduino because this device, the, the, the shell, uh, run in Arduino IDE. So in my case, in this example, in the ZEP tutorial that are more uh, detailed there, I use it uh, Arduino, okay? The, the file or the code that we receive, it have a kind of initialization that is, is, is common for, uh, for, for uh, uh, for all those machine learning uh, TensorFlow like micro uh, codes, and uh, and uh, in the main loop, what do you do is one one piece of the, the the codes we call image provider that you do exactly should do exactly what we did should and always must do exactly what was done for our in our training. So you see, if our training cut the image ninety six by ninety six, we need to do the same here. So you capture the image from the camera. Usually the camera will do a, a bigger image. For example, if it was v, VGA, for example, is 40, 480 to 240. And I would read, I should read this image, a library for reading the, 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 the camera, the buffer of the camera. And we need to crop and convert, if necessary, uh, the image. Okay, so it's doing this part of the code. Following that, when you have this input tensor, that is the, the our 96 by 96 by three, okay? This guy will be the input of a, a TensorFlow-like micro model, okay, that will be run. In this case here, um, uh, the ESP32S3, okay, uh, is, is a CPU made by, by Expressive, and that we have a SP neural network accelerator. So it's a, this is very good. So this accelerates a lot. This this uh, help to to run. This can be run in in all ESP uh, type of uh, microcontrollers. Okay. So we go to to the model. Okay, our model. The model. What model? The model that was trained in the in the edge impulse. And the tensor. The tensor that you got in the in the output will be one of the classes. In my in our case, will be a tensor with the three classes. Or, or a apple, or a banana, or a potato. Okay, and with the and the, usually you have uh, the the soon because the soon 
of the values that we got from the output layer should be should add you one. Okay, the biggest one is more related. There's the more probability to be our class in our in our classification. Okay, if a banana, an apple, or not. Okay. After that, you should do something with that. So you do a post processing. In our case, we call a detection responder. That what do you do? I use that. It only in this case, very simple. Only you write this in the serial monitor and telling us uh, some information and telling us about about the the probability to each one of the two classes. Okay, and the time that we got to do that. Okay, so for example, this is a real case. I, I show this, this, I took in this case was from 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 uh, from uh, from internet, another another image. And after that, I, I use some apples, some bananas here in the in the tutorial. You can see that. And I got, for example, all, all work very well, very reasonable uh, with the amount of the data that, that we have here and the, the, the size of the value. The, the... And what I also did, I did a kind of a benchmark. The same, the same bananas and apples and uh, and uh, potatoes. Uh, uh, let's say uh, data set I use as an input for uh, not only for Oshao SP thirty two S three, but also for a ESP CAN. Okay, that was a device that is very common. Very, very a lot of people use that, and the Arduino Pro. Okay, so we did the, the three. The three worked very well, and you can see that uh, the, the, the fastest one was that we expected was the Arduino Pro, okay? Uh, the, the, not that, that's the, the, uh, the lower, sp uh, medium speed we got with uh, the SP and a good speed, uh, the lower, the, the uh, sorry, the, lo the lower speed with uh, the SP can and the middle stay the shell. But the, the, the important, important thing is this, this guy here, you can buy today by, Fifteen dollars, one five, okay. And this guy is more than one hundred dollars. So we are talking about it. the the upper the upper part of this types of devices. Uh, you can you can find by seven to ten times more expensive than this one. So and this is a, a little bit in the same the same range. But this guy, like I said, you have a microphone. We don't find micro microphone here. We have a microphone, and also we can have a we have. A, the SD card reader, okay? That was very brief, very brief. I went in more details in other parts. I tried to select parts that you explore here with the other, the other guys. I know that people have some uh, um, questions because the, I would like to give, give you an overview, guys, about the three uh, projects. I will leave the questions for the end, but please take this for me. But I will answer all the questions even after the after the the talk, okay, the the, the Tiamel Foundations will send me all the, the the questions and I answer. We can define, we can put the answers here in the in the in the the, the, the foundation uh, uh, YouTube or and, and uh, we can select other 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 channels. Okay, let's talk about vibration or motion. Okay, in this case. We ought, what you what you try to simulate here, for example, suppose that you are talking about to see how a kind of uh, movement of uh, a container is is doing since for, since when I uh, when I have a container in a in a warehouse going to a, a train or a truck and go to the to the, some boats etc. Okay, I explore this here in this tutorial. So uh, it's it, because the, the, the shell sense has camera and has a uh, microphone. Don't have a accelerometer, for example, that we use here, but no problem. So what, what I did, uh, uh, for example, what I did, I take the shell, okay? I don't need, including this case, I don't need the, we don't need the, the, this, 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 this sense part, okay? And I installed external, external accelerometer, okay? But for example, you can have such kind of uh, extension board, for example, put your shell here. And for example, you can, you can have a growth, a growth accelerometer. So it's good for training, for tests, et cetera. But of course, for real projects, you test something like that. You create your board uh, 
uh, having your accelerometer near here. The good thing is this guy has a I square C pins uh, that you can use as a bus for several devices connecting uh, externally. Okay. So perfect. So as I said, it's simple. You should connect connect the 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 guy here. I use a, a six zero five zero accelerometer here. In my case, it's six five zero zero. Is the is the equivalent? Okay. Is is a is a IMU that you, when you, you you can find here accelerometer and gyroscope. Here is a six ax uh, uh, IMU. Okay, a, a inertial module. Okay. Very simple. The connection. Look. You only need to 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 have a VCC and GND here, three point three and one. The, the the Xiao can 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 deliver the power for that, and you have here the connection uh, with the I square C bus, two two lines, and that's it. Have a library, and you will control very easily. Okay, as I said before, what I want, I have a container. Okay, what I want is to. But you can imagine you have several containers. I can have a kind of a TNMI, TNML device. This container, so can be here in a in a in a warehouse, can be in a lift, for example. Okay, in a in a in, in a lift car, for example. This guy would be in a boat in a very you know complex ocean. You can see it can move in in several several directions here. Correct, and in a truck. Can go more in a horizontal horizontal way. Okay, so it's a it's a simulation that in this case is a simulation, but uh, for us to study the movements, that's what I did in the tutorial. But you can do this for real, for example, to study what's going on with your machinery. You can put the device over a platform and see how the vibration of the machine. The philosophy or the idea is exactly the same. Okay, so. You create your projects. Okay, in my case here, you can find the project that I create for for the Shao ESP32 SC3 motion classification. Okay, you go there, and the first thing that you should do, you you can go to data acquisition. Here, there is a lot of a lot of ways to capture data. Uh, to capture data. Okay, if you come here, I, I gave a one hour speech uh, a couple of months ago in the the site in ML. Uh, workshop, I, I invite you guys to, to come here. When I explore all the ways that you can capture data and take the data to the edge impulse. Particularly, I did that in a simple way. Uh, edge impulse has a, has a tool that is data, data for order. And what we did is I put a code inside the device. What code? A code that reads the, the code should read the accelerometer and take the accelerometer and send to the serial, the serial connection. And this I, I can go, let's say, online or real time to the to, to the studio and capture data. So you can simulate in this case. In real projects, this is not the case. In real projects, what should be done? You should, for example, capture data here when you when you you, you do your movement or we will have. The, the Xiao over a platform or a fan or whatever you want to study the 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 the, the, the movements the vibration etc and for example you can collect the data and store the data for example in the SD card here after that you enter with this 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 data and you you can send the data offline that's the normal that's the most most real thing situation to the edge impulse or depend of the the case you you can use for example uh, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi to send the data to to a, to a phone, for example. Uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago, one of my students published a tutorial of doing that. They are they are doing a a, a project when they have a shell uh, in a in a um, using a gene, for example, to see if you are doing correctly or not uh, an exercise. Of course, should be all offline. I mean, not connect to anything. So you have a, you have a device connected to your to, to your machines when you are doing the, the exercise and the information first all the data the data logger goes to a telephone from a telephone in, in Bluetooth to capture all the data send to Edge Impulse to make all the processing and after that also what we do is we do the inference when I have the model training but I send the results to the to the to the smartphone to 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 show us okay. 
When you have the data, okay, you, you, or, or you, you, you connect this, straight the data here using, for example, web USB, or you, 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 you send the data using this device here to, to send the data, the same way that we did with the image we do here, you see for each one of your, your, for your data points, for example, here's a data point that they call Maritim that was over a boat where all the, all the, the three axes, I'm mean, only studying a accelerometer here in this case, I only use a accelerometer to be a smaller model. So we have probably the three axes uh, are in movement. If you are a terrestrial, usually I'm mean, only, uh, the movement was in this direction, horizontal, it lifts, we have more in the vertical, for example, okay? What we do usually, what do I do in, uh, with, uh, with, when I, we work with uh, serial data, time series data, this is a time series data, some time, uh, data that, that uh, are movement in the, in the time, for example, uh, probably this is a ax, uh, is the red is, you can see the uh, red is the, have a more movement, so probably is, probably is the terrestrial, but doesn't matter now. Uh, the other ax, the, the ax Y don't move so much because it's more in one direction. And look, I have a ten, uh, uh, another, another ax here, should be the Z ax because we have the, the gravity, correct? Accelerate, gravity acceleration is 10 meters per second here, 1G, or 9.8 meters per second, second square second is, a, is a 1G. So it's more or less, and uh, because the movements that, uh, that, that we don't. What, you know, such kind of projects, what we do is we take a window, for example, two seconds, why two seconds here? In my case, in my project, I use 50 Hertz for sample rates. So, uh, so uh, in, in, in um, here, because my movements are around one to two Hertz, I, I realized that uh, with the two seconds, I could, I could have around two cycles of data. So it's good for me. You, you should, for example, try to find a window that was not so big, okay? But it's not so smaller that you cannot really capture the movement or because the idea, what you want to do is, once you have one, one window, for example, two seconds of window of a data that was sample with 50 Hertz, we can have 300 uh, uh, raw data, correct? Because 50 Hertz, correct? We've got uh, one second, 50 points. Two seconds, 100 points. Three acts, 300 points. What we do is take these 300 points and enter is an is a, is a input of a spectral analysis. What do you do is looking for this, this data, first in time, in time is, mm, let me see the, let me see the RMS value of this, this curve here. Mm, let me see, for example, the shape, the skewness of the, this, this set of data in, in time. And after that, you can do, for example, is doing a FFT, going to the frequency domain, for example, and you can calculate for example, the most important frequencies that are involved in this specific window here. And for example, in a, in a real case, those 300 data can be converted to something like 64 data that will be our features here, that will be the input tensor of our neural, 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 uh, neural, neural network. In this case, I use a simple, a simple uh, full connected neural network and the output will be one of our classes, okay? Uh, I, 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 I made a, a full, um, a full uh, tutorial explaining the details, what's the mathematics and how uh, the edge does the, the, in the, under the hood, the spectral analysis for, because DSP is digital, DSP is something very, very, very important for us in TNML. Okay, perfect. So, uh, what what we do? We use the opportunity once we ha once we have here the 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 data, the raw data that came from a accelerometer, and I have the output of this spectrum analyze. What we do is we, we do we use two models uh, in parallel with the same uh, input tensor that will be the, those those features here. One will be our classifier, and we use the opportunity also to do 
to to use here anomaly detection doing using a k-means what you do we, we clusterize all our data and see for example how our data that we know how it can be put inside clusters and everything that goes out of those clusters will be some anomaly something that we're not expecting so this is what i we sought uh, we, we should have in mind before we define uh, our impulse. So we come here, if you, you, the, after you have your data, the next thing is define impulse. So as, is, as we saw in my, my, my drawing, we'll do, I define my window, two seconds, 2000 milliseconds. And this window, what do you do with this window? This window, I, I should slice the window, okay? So I, with a, in this case, 200 milliseconds, I do a kind of denomination also here because I, I have one window here, move a window, move a window, only 10% uh, of the, the size of the window. So in, you can see in like uh, four seconds, you have, uh, I don't know, 20, 20 data points here, okay? So, uh, so you define, this is the data, how you capture the data, okay? And uh, this, and uh, once I, I uh, this, this will be the input of our spectral analyze and the output will go, will go to my classifier and, to my anomaly detections uh, blocks. And the output will be, will be four classes here, lift, idle, maritime, and terrestrial, and one class here for anomaly detection or not. Okay, so the first thing in this case, we have a lot of options different from image. When you do the, the analysis spectrum, okay, there is a lot, a lot of uh, uh, different things that should say how much, for example, uh, if, uh, I use a FFT, for example, perfect. Or I also have a possibility to use a wavelet. In this case, FFT is okay. But also, if depend of your depend of your your if you need to have a kind of a mix between time and frequency, wavelets is another techniques that is using for DSP. But let's say you need first to think. No, I use FFT. Hmm, what's the size of our uh, uh, FFT? That we that we use, uh, we have some uh, 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 filter or not filter. We need to, for example, use only uh, small frequencies and left the high frequency for high vibration. That's not uh, related with. Um, I live in Chile, so there is a lot of vibrations. That's nothing to do with my movement analysis, and uh, I don't want that want that moving. So I use a filter, for example. So if you are expert, you can come here and define your parameters. Or you can use an auto tune uh, button here that you do for you automatically. So this is so this is this is good, okay, perfect. So again, our raw features will be the three hundred features that that is the input. I will take this guy it will be converted here in this case for sixty three features. It will be RMS for one, each one of the uh, the axes. Will be the skewness of the of the 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 the, the, the the uh, the data that, that that's containing that that windows etc okay super look you can see here two milliseconds two kilobytes of uh, RAM nothing okay when you do that here we here we define what you want and you can see examples in the in the in the same page but when you say save parameters you go to another page that you really do this for you. Okay, what you do, you take your input data that was the, the raw data and take the windows and take everything. You can tell uh, um, for the studio to, to tell you what's the most important features. Of course, the RMS are very important for Z, RMS for X, RMS values, of course. But as you saw that, for example, in this terrestrial movement, only the X will be really a... a very expressive RMS, including the Z will filter that uh, gravity will be near, near zero. And you can see how the data will be clusterized here. So in a feature explorer, this given us a, a, good, a good indication that uh, our classifier will, will work okay because they have clusters very well defined. This is a cluster for WIDO, this is a cluster for the lift, et cetera. Okay, perfect. So the next, we need to define our model, different from the other, the other case when I had a, a, a we did a, a transfer, a learning transfer, I use a model pre, predefined. Here I need to create my model. As I said, I use a simple dense 
a, a, dense, a dense neural network, okay, a full connected. So you enter with my 63, my input layer will be 63, 63 neurons. That we, I can't change this because this is related with the output of uh, of uh, uh, our spectral spectral block. Correct this is the output of that. For example, we decide here to use two hiding blocks: one with the twenty neurons, another one with the, with ten neurons, and we have an output block here. That if I have four classes, this this will be four neurons, and of course uh, you, you need to define the activation. Uh, function here. Softmax should be the, the output because I have more than one or more than two classes. And uh, we have a, a ReLU for the, 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 the hiding ones. So in short, I enter with the 63 features in our, in our model and we, we go out with four classes. They'll say the same thing we did before, we should define. Here we put the, we enter we should enter with the model that we designed, okay, input layer, the density layer with 20 narrows, the density layer 10 narrows, and output with four. A very simple, the full connected neural network. I will define 30, 30 cycles here to use a learning rate of a 0 0.0005. You see for was a little bit, when you see the, the, the values, it's not so, so good. You can reduce this to be more stable, et cetera. The same here, the validation, and, and that's it. As expected, because it's a simple model and uh, the, mov the movements were very well defined, I got almost 100% the accuracy of, uh, of this model here. And uh, again, we had a, a low time and low memory needed both for pre-processing and for the, the definition here, okay? We should do the same for the second model. We should train in the, the Cummings, correct? Uh, you should define the number of clusters, usually more than 30 clusters. Uh, it, it, you say, ah, why not four clusters? Yes, you can put, I will have four classes, I would like to have four clusters. Remember, with this kind of data, you don't know the classes, but if you put four, it's okay. But the point is, you see that you'll be much bigger, the, the clusters. When you define a lot of clusters, usually you have a kind of uh, in, involve. The clusters will involve your data in a way that it appears something. Suppose that this is a, a, an out, a, a data. This will be out of these clusters. Opa, this is something that was not expecting to, to happen, okay? You can define here, or you can use the, the stars here is the is adding post to give you an idea. Look, those should be the most important features that you saw when you did that. It was the, really the, 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 the features that can be more important when you do the pre-processing. So let's use that you can create here. Once you create, you should uh, deploy your data. You come here, you select, I would like, if you want to deploy as Arduino library or a, C, C, a C++ library, okay? You can, you can define here, okay? And you build, when you build, this model will be created, embedded as a library, and you can see the, the, mod, the, the library will show in our device. This library so should be entered in Arduino IDE as a, as a dot .zip, okay? It's a normal when you install new libraries in your Arduino IDE. When you do that, the next, the next step is doing the, the inference, okay? So if you move in a horizontal way, you see the terrestrial value here. In case I realized in my model, the terrestrial was not that good because I moved, I mixed it a little bit when they did the, 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 the data collection. And here idle, it was, we can see here, it's a 99% here, okay, and, and et cetera. So my rhythm, when I move in several directions to the three axes, I got, I could see very clear that's a maritime. And uh, lift is vertical, it's very, very easy to, to do. And this, I, 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 I try to move in really not, not because in fact, it's not, uh, I don't have balance here. Another another thing that you I, I call I want to show uh, the uh, call your attention is that uh, if you look all the anomaly score that you got here are very small less than one for example okay or neg slice negative or slice positive so this is remember we have five outputs the four for the neural the neural network block and one from uh, from the anomaly detection when you try something that was not expected expected for example 
suppose that you know your my your container rolling rolling from your uh, boat or from your lift as something that you're not expecting so those guys will be i this 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 kind of data this data point you'll be outside of uh, of your group of uh, uh your clusters suppose you have all your maritime is is in one region or your lift in another region something appears that you're not expecting when you see here you see including usually i in my experience that some examples that i did usually the, class, the, the output of classifier usually will be maritime, but it doesn't matter. This is because uh, 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 you, you are moving all the axes. But you can see the anomaly score starts to become higher. So when you go, you try to do something that was not uh, prepared before, correct? So, uh, 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 so that's that, you know, <laughs> very quickly, very, very quickly overview. So let's say I have a well, in fact, I, I think that we have zero time, but I'll go very quickly to the sound here, okay? So the sound, uh, what do you do here? We work, uh, we try to work um, with a, a keyword spotting. It's exactly what we have when when, the, when you guys have an, an Alexa, for example. We have two parts here. We have a, a part that was always working, that was uh, continuous listen, it's a TNML part that when you when you listen a word, triggers something bigger that you really connected is uh, with the, the the cloud. It's a cascade. It's a cascade cascade project here. So what do you do? We should do in in terms of inference. What should be done? What we want to do? I want to say yes for the for the for the the device here. The microphone will capture this data. Okay, a raw data here in, in time. We convert this in, in uh, like an image, a 1D image. Okay, this will be my pre-processing using a, this algorithm, EM, MFCC. And this will be the this will be the the the, the input, the, the input tensor for a model here. You'll be a, a convolutional model because what we want to classify simple convolutional uh, 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 model that will classify simple images. On the, the image will show the, in fact, the, the combination of frequency that I have in this specific sound here. Again, in the tutorial, I, I, I give a little bit more of uh, details here. And usually, when, you, when I finish, I want to do some uh, post-processing that will, for example, if I say yes with more than 80%, the LED, the internal LED will be turned on, okay? And also the information goes to the to here, okay? The same way, we should create a project. My project is here, okay? You should uh, uh, up, update, uh, upload the data to here. You can do, or you capture the data, what the device, and, and uh, save the data in the SD card. And from the SD card, you send up, or also you can use your, your cell phone, because the, the important here, if you use 16 kilobytes of a sample height, it's okay. And 16 bits of that, you, you can use any device to capture your, your song. It's always good that you use your same device to capture data. Okay, this is much more important with the accelerometer, for example, less important with image and, uh, and sound, but it, at least part of your data should, be, should come from your, your device. We, we capture the, the, the data here. The data will be converted, as I said, for example, one second sample 16 kilohertz will be converted in a kind of image. You define, you should define the size of the image because in fact, this 49 means that you have a slice, this in 49 parts, like a kind of, a, we move from this, we move here 49 pieces here and each piece will define the frequency in 13 uh, um, steps here. So, you know, the from lower to high frequencies here and the values. This color is only a, a, a CMAP that I'm using here, okay? It's not, a, it, it's, a, it's a from zero to 255, okay? This image, okay? Perfect. Again, I have a, define my window. It's a one second. You can, for example, define that you can use part of this window, kind of a slice window, so you can uh, uh, have a data mentation here. You define your, your AMFCC and your, your classifier. Okay, again, you can define your out tune here. 
to define the, the size. The most important here is the size of the FFT that to be used to generate here, okay? The size of the FFT is very important to define the, the, the amount of time that uh, you do the inference. In this case here, I'm using a, a, a ESPI that is a little bit inferior our our device, so our device should be better than this. Okay. Define my model. Okay, it's a it's a is I use a one D instead of a two D one D one D dropout to reduce the uh, overfitting, and that's it. Training. Okay. Build the model, and you can see the model. You can see the the, the results. Very briefly, you can see that in the tail in the in there. If you want to learn more, I left for you guys. You can you can have access to this PDF. You have a several books and tutorials, and also remember our our group of HTML for D that we have a website. We can have a lot of information there. Uh, every 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 last week of the month, we have a HTML for D show and tell where universities people can show their projects. It's a good opportunity for people to to show. So I hope I have some time for question and answer. <laughs> uh, Alison? Yes. Thanks a lot. Sorry for the, the rush. Thank you. Thank you so much for your fantastic sharing. OK, uh, uh, let me see if I try to answer something. Um, yes. OK, so I'm just talking. I, I, I don't know if you can. Uh, how can contact me? Uh, it's my. Well, it's, you can Rovai. My name Rovai uh, at Unife, my university Unife dot uh, edu the education dot br the Brazil. So it's a way to to contact me or my. Um, let me say. Um, uh, can you put uh, multiple four such device together? If you, Jim, if you're talking about uh, uh, sensor fusion, yes, I can have I can have more than more than one sensor connected. So you must take care, of course, uh, how you collect collect those data and do the pre-processing to use in your in your device. Okay, uh, but of course we're talking about one device. When I, I if I'm talking about the 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 inference, the inference is doing in one device, but can have multiples. Uh, sensors, a sensor fusion we call uh, to do that. Can ChatGPT or LLM say using TNML? No. So far, it's not possible because those kind of uh, lar LLM, no? so large language model, also, they use very, very big model. We're starting to use attention. Attention is a kind of a, a kind of a, a type of a neural neural uh, uh, model, let's say that that is used by Chat GPT. Okay, that we are we are starting to see. We are starting to see. I think last week, uh, Edge Impulse launch using FOMO. It's a it's a, a way to do object detection with uh, in 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 in, in, in team devices, and you can with using attention, you can see, for example. If this kind of a device is left or right of an order, etc., so it's something that is coming, but I'm I'm not expecting to have a, a, a LLM or a GPT in, in a TNML. It's not it's not that TNML is to bring intelligence to sensors. That's the point. This, your sensor to become intelligent. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, Pascal asking. Yes, MicroPython. Uh, uh, MicroPython is possible to use MicroPython. Depend depends if your device has a space. In our case, yes, there is a space. Uh, I didn't see yet MicroPython ported to to the the, the show, but I think that we'll see this very soon. For example, I use uh, uh, for example if you use a high end uh, uh, like like Arduino Pro, for example, like Portenta and in, uh, in, in Nikla. You can use uh, Open OpenMV IDE when it's prepared to use to, to run MicroPython. You can remember when you say MicroPython, you should have also the the, the, the MicroPython uh, interpreter uh, inside inside your device. It, and uh, this interpreter is bigger than the interpreter, 
that's used by the TensorFlow like Micro, developed by Pete Warden in, in Google a couple of three years ago. Okay. Um, in the on the computer preparation, pre pre preparation, define the database, adapt the model, adapt the running. You might say, uh, yes. I mean, the most important part of any 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 machine learning project is the data. Data is the most important thing. When you have the data, not only the pre preparation or the pre formatting, the conversion that we show today, two types of conversion. No, we converted. Uh, time series data in tabular data. We converted sound data in image. Uh, we, of course, when you collect the real data, you need to, you need first, you need to clean your data, you, you shape your data, normalize your data. And after that, you can use this data to enter. Some cases you can use the, 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 the Edge Impulse Studio do this for you, some, uh, some pre-preparation of the data, but usually in real, real cases, it's, it's important that you have your data uh, uh, clean it before your, your training, okay? It's no MEP because no port in, in I don't know what's MEP, sorry, of uh, ESPNN. Uh, on, on the target load, the classifier and apply it to input data. On the target load, the classifier and apply it to input data. No, I don't know. What. Um, uh, does it mean that the training on the PC is mandatory? Uh, the TNML is a good, uh, the classifier? Yes, that, exactly. Look, it's possible in some cases, specific cases, do the training inside the device, but it's not that common. People are studying this nowadays. You have also some of federated learning, et cetera. You, have, you do the training with several, let's say, distributed to several microcontrollers. But... No, nowadays, when you say, when you're talking about serious TNML projects, embedded machine learning projects, you do all your pre-preparation, pre training, conversion, everything you do I say, in the cloud or your, in your computer, if you want. And the final results, you should uh, uh, deploy to your device and do the inference in your device, okay? Well, Pascal asked about the two seconds that I captured there. No, it's not two seconds. Uh, in fact, you should see your data. Suppose that uh, my movements are much more complex. Maybe one second is enough, half seconds is enough. What I said is you should have a few, a few uh, uh, cycles of your data. When you see your data, you see, look, my, 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 my movements, there is a kind of pattern and my window capture a couple of uh, uh, cycles of that pattern, it's okay. In my case, because I did such kind of movements, look, it's like a one, two seconds was the frequency of my movements. That's because when one window, I got a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, movements. So, you, the, so the size of the length of your window depends on the, the, your data. Does the ARM uh, processor which does inference in 40 45 milliseconds, the predator, use tin of a micro under the hood or uh, no. Uh, in that, that example, uh, with the ARM processor, uh, I use I use the same uh, uh, the, the same framework, the same TensorFlow Lite Micro. It was the same, the, the same, the, the the same process was deployed, the same project or this was deployed in different uh, microcontrollers. Okay. Um, does the shipping container act a Faraday cage? Uh, no, in this case, in this case, no. Um, how long do the batteries last during the shipping container example? Again, you need to test it. The good thing is such kind of devices, such kind of devices, they use very, very, very low power, including when you do that, Usually you, you, you take some data and you, you don't need to have, a, for example, 100 at a time capturing data. So you can, for example, programming that, that uh, program it to capture data in a, for example, each, each minute or 10 minutes or whatever. And also you can do, for example, if something happens, the accelerometer can interrupt the, the, the sleep mode and you can open and capture that data and analyze something uh, strange, strange happens. But uh, I can tell you that uh, with such kind of device, with a small battery, you can have a month of, uh, of, uh, of energy. They use, 
they, they, in sleeping, they use micro pairs in terms of conception, a little bit more when do the inference. And depend also depend of your sensor. With the accelerometer, it's not that much. With camera, it's much more. And again, even when you have a camera, imagine that you have a camera in the fields, okay? Like in the, in the middle of the jungle, when you want to monitor animals. What you want, it's, uh, for example, you have only one animal uh, cross your path, you take the photo, for example. So only that moment you take the photo, okay? So it's a way of your, always a balance. It, but the good thing about TNML is that uh, uh, those devices can run uh, those, those models, those, those machine learning models with using very low, low power, okay? Um, uh, let me see if I have something up quickly. Well, I have more 10 questions. I think by the time uh, I answer the questions, <laughs> Uh, if you if you if allow me, because I don't know, I think that I explode all my time here. <laughs> okay, I, I I promise you guys that I will I will answer your questions uh, here in the in the, in, in the chat in a more tranquil way. Okay, uh, it's important for you guys that all the all the all the presentation will be available. Okay, and uh, it will be available available in the the TNML. Uh, foundation website and available in YouTube. Okay, so it's important for you guys. And uh, also, let me use the opportunity for you guys to, as Olga said, don't forget, try to register for, for the TNML EMEA that I think that will be, be interesting. There will be a lot of good, very good presentations there. Okay, so I think uh, from my side, I think <laughs> I'd like to stay. For, if, you, if you leave me, I talk a lot, but I, I might. You know, I'm Italian descendant, so I use my hands. I, I can, I can, uh, with my hands, I can talk ten days here. But uh, <laughs> also, <laughs> okay, I understand. Yes, this presentation is really great. So that's why the audience has so much questions <laughs> for you. <laughs> Can't wait to hands on the projects. Yeah, please do the tutorials. I, I, you can do all those in a very, very easy way, and I'm available to answer your questions, including the tutorials in Hackster, enter there. Go, yes. this is the future. TNML is the future, or, or better, is the present. <laughs> cool. And yes, we still have 10 more questions and we will summarize it. And after we uh, have some recording of the uh, upload to the YouTube, uh, we can list all the uh, answers for the audience. Thank you for all the participants and uh, thank you for Professor Mar Marcelo's sharing. Pleasure. And later, uh, I'd like to thanks again for the strategy partners of 10ML Foundation for committing to take 10ML to the next level together. Uh, there, and, yes, and the, some uh, executive strategic partners. Mm, let's see. Edge Impulse, the leading development platform for Edge ML. And we have uh, Qualcomm advising AI research to make efficient AI ubiquitous. And also we have um, Accelerate Your Edge Compute Senitent making edge AI a reality. And also, uh, thanks for the platinum strategy partners, including uh, Renaissance. Renaissance is enabling the next generation of AI uh, powered solutions that will revolutionize every industry sector sector and also sony deploy vision ai at the edge at scale and also our gold strategy partners analog device where what if becomes what it is and also Arduino Pro, easily deploy your 10 ML solutions with Arduino Pro.
And ARM AI, ARM AI Virtual Tech Talks, the latest AI trends, technologies, best practice from ARM and our ecosystem partners. And the infinite driving decarbonization and digitalization together. And Internura. And also Microsoft. And the CineML Analytist. And also ST uh, Microelectronics provides extensive solutions to make turning machine learning easy. And the synaptics and also our silver strategic partners. Thank you for make these uh, ten email talks uh, available. And the last, um, this multimedia file is copyrights twenty twenty three by ten ml foundation. All rights reserved. <laughs>